Hello and welcome to another Quality of Life Tools add-on demo. And this time it's for the Qual Spec Lighting Ops add-on. It's an add-on designed to, amongst other things, intuitively place specular lighting on objects. Specular lighting is the highlights, the gleam, the glimmer and sheen that makes shader and objects pop in just the right way. Spec lighting Ops also aids in the light linking process, which is the ability to specifically light only certain objects, or conversely, ignore objects. Spec Lighting Ops also adds various helper tools to the lighting properties that are specific to that kind of light. The magic of colour gradients, hotspots, <laughs> fall off, all that kind of thing. Lots of fun and handy little tweaks to help you speed up your workflow. Now, do bear in mind that there's also another add-on available by a chap called Leonid Altman, a lovely and friendly fella whose add-on is called Light Wrangler. Light Wrangler is similar in many ways. It allows you to place specular points. His add-on has a slightly different approach to the interaction, but his add-on also does come complete with a built-in library of HDRI images. Do give it a try, I highly recommend it. Ah, uh, who am I kidding? It's definitely a better add-on. Uh, I made Qual Spec Light Ops for myself, really, and it's tuned to the way I like to work, but who knows, it may also be for you too. So then, how does it work? Well, if you want to add a highlight in a very specific area, say just on the rim of the monkey's ear, just on that little section there, all you would have to do is right click the Qual Spec Lighting Ops and add area light on surface. That's all you have to do. And it interactively adds the light for you. If you move it anywhere on the surface, it calculates exactly where it needs to be. Once you place it there, you will have on the lights section of property panel a whole plethora of, well, these little toys and controls to play with. And just for the sake of the demo, um, obviously this is a bit, a bit small to see on the screen, let's enlarge that so we can see what we're doing. Right, there we go. So when hovering on that area of the lights, you will see this panel. Now, when you've positioned a light, maybe you don't want it exactly there, maybe you wanted it on the side, what you can do, as long as you have that as the active object, the active light, just right click again and reposition the light. And you can reposition it anywhere and it will do the same thing. Now, if you were to move it manually instead, uh, using the G key, for example, it tries obviously to, well, not obviously, but it, it tries to retain the target, which is that that point is it's remembered where it was aiming at. And it's not a constraint, it uh, calculates on the fly, which you can see by the distance. The distance updates for you as well on, on the fly, um, for which you can turn that on or off. Now, the auto power changes the strength of the, the light depending on how far away you are. Um, see, it gets dimmer when you move it far away, but if you have auto power on when you move it far away, it tries to retain the same distance because that that, that number is um, exponential it's it's a, a fall off which needs to be recalculated every time and well, this this does it for you so once again when moving the light with the g key it tries to remember or tries to get back to the point now obviously the way that spec lights work um, that highlight is going to move as well it, it doesn't necessarily end up on that point because you're manually moving it with a G key. Otherwise, like I say, you can always just reposition the light on the surface and it does so. Now, when you're moving it with the uh, G key, um, it, as I say, tries to target itself towards its own point of reference, that its own target point there, which is invisible to you as a user. And if you're trying to rotate it, sometimes that can be a bit confusing because it won't rotate. However, all you do is put cursor to target with the alt key and it will set the rotation pivot around the cursor, which is of course the same place as the light's target. So everything acts as normal there. Also note that if you control click, it resets everything as it was before the last operation. So when you've positioned a light, um, as I mentioned before, you will have in this panel, a whole range of new controls that you might not be used to. And that's because it's created a nodes setup for it. 
So if you go into shader editor, you will see that it's now using this node tree, which it builds for you automatically and sets up all the links, all that, that kind of thing for you um, immediately and automatically. If you turn off use nodes, it will default to the standard controls that you would have for pretty much any light. So use nodes on. And another thing to bear in mind is that this only works in cycles. If you go to EV, it'll do most of the other things, but these controls uh, won't be available. These are purely for cycles using nodes. Anyway, let's get on with it. Power is again standard, but we also have strength. Now I find that power can be a bit funny when working with it because you have to drag <laughs> forever to get the, the values you want. It, it doesn't necessarily jump as easy. I know you can shift to slow things down, but sometimes you want to move big numbers. And um, for that, strength is just easier to manipulate, I find. It's, it's a, a multiplier. Strength is a multiplier. <laughs> and I went mad there, didn't I? Now, under there, we have another thing, is the exponential and hotspot, which I have special features for, it's called spec lights. The hotspot changes the size of the spot in the middle. Now, let's just change the shader for a second so it's a bit clearer what's going on. Surface, and let's turn the roughest down to, ooh, very, very low, in fact, zero. Um, the hotspot, uh, as you'll see, let's change the size so it's easier to see. Hotspot of zero at the moment. So let's bring the strength down a little bit. And you can see the hotspot is something that you can scale on the fly. It's not the same as the size of the object. It's very specifically the hotspot on the soft fall off. The soft fall off is also controlled by the exponential value. So you can make it smoother or harder as, as you like. Um, so anyway, let's turn that hotspot down for a little bit on this one and bring the exponential quite up. I like a very soft light a lot of the time and the size up there because now we can have a look at the colors. Normally you would have a flat color for anything you're doing. Boring. We don't want that. So let's turn that down and we have a ramp built into it, which is a radial gradient ramp. So rather than just go to say, uh, say let's just add a cyan color there uh, for the the bright spot uh the, the bright white part of that and here we can add a blue a darker blue and let's kill that hot spot completely you can see that we can now vary the colors which is a really essential thing to do when, when getting rich highlights on things obviously i've gone a bit mad on this one but you get the gist of it you can get a lot of those fabulous like uh, pixar candy colors coming from these things so that was the exponential and the hotspot. Um, there we go. As I say there, uh, size is obvious. We can change the size of the whole object. Note that tends to fade things as well when you make it too large. And that, that's to do with the closeness versus the fall off of that, that kind of thing. But it's uh, easy enough to take care of. Uh, spread is... Now bear in mind that when we make these lights, they are area lights and spread just tightens it. Oh, you can't see my hand gestures <laughs> I'm on a video. Um, it, it tightens it uh, in the same that way that you would tighten a, um, a spotlight. Uh, so that's that, the color, 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 color. Oh, also, yes, we have HDRI as well. Now, unlike Leonid's add-on there, which I mentioned earlier, the fabulous add-on there, uh, this doesn't come with its own built-in library, but you can add HDRI textures to it. But what we can do is go to HDRI textures and add our own lights. So let's go lights and umbrella alpha. In fact, you know what? Let's kill that one and open a different one. I like to go for lights and that's a nice one. And some you won't initially see that. Um, what you do is you mix it in. So there we go. That light has been mixed in. So you can have a variation. This is actually quite good to be able to blend between a soft light and a mixed light for various circumstances. Uh, there we go. And let's instead reposition it there. So you, you, you can see that that window light is there. Uh, do you know what? I will actually go for that umbrella instead. There we go, umbrella light. And the size of that one. So again, HDRI lights, they are facilitated. There's they're just not a built-in library for it. Now. You can add a... Oh, do you know what? I'll come back to that later. Presets.
And finally, what we have is the more intuitive, at least I feel, way of isolating objects to be lit by specific lights. So, for example, these plum-like things up here, these... Uh, <laughs> well, they are plums in another image of mine, but anyway. Um, these lights, let's add a new area light to these ones. So what we can do here is, if we only want to light these and nothing else for the monkey, because we're going to be doing other things with other surfaces, uh, maybe you've got a pineapple or whatever surface going on here that you don't particularly want to be lit in the same way as the plums, then you can isolate them. Now, light linking is built into Blender, but this makes it a tiny bit more intuitive, tiny bit maybe, by you select the objects that you want to be affected by it, select your light that you want to be affected by them, and light only selected. Click, and it literally lights only those now. Um, similarly here, let's, let's add just a tiny little speck light to this one. And much, much tighter. Let's go. There we go. Um, but that one is causing an unwanted highlight up here, as you can see. So what we can do is we can select those plums again and say, with this light, we do not want those to be affected. So you're still getting the highlight on the eyeball, but not on those plums, as you can see up there. Um, so yeah, that, that, that's pretty intuitive, I think. So let's take a, um, a use case here where you want to light the front of this monkey. Um, the problem often with very, very chromey or, or shiny surfaces is that as soon as you try and add a specular light on it, um, you see, you, you want to light the whole of the surface, but you, you're just getting these little points and it can be quite frustrating. So, I, that's one of the reasons I've built this one. It, it, it really does help me making larger, softer spots for this specific scenario. So we turn down the, the highlight, and there we go. We're already getting a nice, smoother sort of surface on that one. Now, obviously, you don't want to have to do that every time. So what we can do is, and you can't see it in this one, so we'll turn the zoom off. Yes, what we can do is add presets which are in the bottom section here now i will admit that the <laughs> i will warn you in fact that presets are not on by default so go in because as of recording this video the allow presets is a bit of a beta feature <laughs> beta feature is a bit of a, a beta feature um there may be a few other things i want to add on later on but Right now, um, it's off by default. Turn it on, and then you have presets. So, for example, this light here, you may want to save it as Extra Big Softy. Uh, just change the name, Extra Big Super Softy, maybe. There we go, and save preset. So then you can set pretty much anything by just selecting your presets. Simple as that, really. And at this point, I'm going to interrupt my own video here, because um, since recording this video the first time, one of my beta testers has requested a pie menu to be added. And thank you very much, Fabian. It's a really good idea. So the L key also brings up a pie menu for you. If we don't have an active object as a spec light, you will get the add area light on surface, right? So all, all the usual things on the, the pie menu there. And then if you have a light selected, you can use the pie menu to change the strength or, or you know, all, all of the other things that you can usually do on the side. Well, most of the other things you can do on the side as well. Um, and that's about it, really. Oh, no, if it's like I say, it's defaulting to the L key. Creaky chair here. It's defaulting to the L key, but if you want to change it to anything else, of course, you just go into Preferences and Key Map, search for Spec, and you'll see Spec Lighting Ops there. And here, you can change it to whatever key you like. So, once again, the L key, or whatever you set it to, and you will have a pie menu. Anyway, back to the video. And I think I've covered it all. <laughs> I'm, I'm sat here scratching my head, you can't see that. 
Um, and as usual, I'm wobbling, aren't I? <laughs> I, um, I made this add-on for myself, as I said before. Um, I just hope you like it too. Um, as always, it's going to be included for free in the Quality of Life Tools full collection. So uh, if you've already bought the full collection, you'll get this one for free, as always. Anyway, thanks again for now, and bye-bye. <laughs>